Hi there, let's make a saw. I bought these parts from Blackburn Tools. It's their nine inch blade with 16 teeth per inch. And uh, I actually got the 12 inch spine because it's also a little bit thicker and wider. And I think I want that extra weight. It needs to be cut to length, of course, but first I need to make a handle. I think this is IPE. The density is just right according to wood database and it appears to be a decking board which seems to be the primary use for IPE. But of course there are many other species it could be. It's very very hard either way. It's a 20mm board and I want a 30mm blank for saw handles. So I flattened and laminated two pieces wiping the surfaces with denatured alcohol before gluing to get rid of the oils in the wood and make sure the glue can create a nice bond. That is exhausting. But I finally have a blank of the right thickness and a couple of veneers and uh, I can start drawing my shape. I made this uh, sort of test piece from MDF. These uh, little notches for the fingers feel great. I wish I had done that on my other saw handles. I have to move this up a little bit to be a more snug fit and I don't like this shape so I'm going to use it partly as a template and partly freehand something else. And for a dovetail saw the grain needs to run in sort of that direction to make this thinnest part strong enough. I wanted to use an auger bit like this one to drill out these various radiuses but I did some tests in an offcut and this lead screw which is called the snail I really like that it just uh, splits the wood I have to make a pilot hole well any pilot hole that is smaller than the threads the wood splits this stuff is so hard it just does not compress one bit, so I'll have to use a metal cutting drill bit instead. Hearing protection on. So I've used rasps, files and chisels to get sort of the silhouette right. It already feels pretty good. But before I start shaping it, rounding over the edges, I need to cut the slot for the blade. Once you start uh, rounding over things, uh, you lose the nice flat surfaces to measure from. So I actually planed this a little bit after sawing away the thin sides and uh, it's pretty consistent thickness right now. I'm going to use the glue line as my line to saw the blade slot. It is perfectly centered as accurately as I can measure. So I think that's going to work. It was uh, really lucky I had a saw that matched this uh, plate so well. I'm going to squeeze it in the vise now just to make sure that doesn't move and slip on the spine and just scribe around it here so I can make a little notch where the spine will sit.
that should work. All right, so at this stage, I want to cut the spine to length. I want to do that to see if the balance feels right and if I have the right hang angle uh, to the handle. I know now that I can make a rough cut there. Maybe I can make a tiny saw with this piece. Let me put a clamp on here so I can make some test cuts to check that hang angle. So these teeth are not sharpened and they have no set. So I'm not expecting this to cut very well. I just want to check the ergonomics. This will work just fine. All right, I think I am going to call it done here. At some point, you just have to stop carving scrolls and <laughs> realize that it's a tool handle. It feels really, really good. I know it looks ridiculously thick. I think that's partly because I have kind of long fingers, so I like a thicker handle, but um, I think in general most handles are too thin yeah, you really need to make it a little bit bulkier to to really sit nicely in the hand and that increases your closeness to the work so much so now I am going to drill holes for the nuts that will keep the blade in place I have these I pulled off from an old saw they're kind of funny they are brass uh, nuts but the screw is just a piece of uh, threaded rod steel uh, but I think they will polish up really nicely Now I want to cut the angle on the blade that will make it seat inside here. So to do that I figure I will line up the spine with the mortise and then push the blade until it visually aligns with the end of the blade slot, which is right there. Then I can remove the spine and it should be there looks about right let's cut that out
All right, so I created little counter sinks for the heads of the screws. I got some pretty bad tear out here. Just gonna have to live with that. I have made it a bit smooth so I won't get splinters and it sucks, but I'm not redoing the handle. <laughs> Other than that, I am super, super pleased with this. It feels amazing in the hand and it's time for finish. This wood is quite a lot darker already than all my other saw handles. So I'm not going to put linseed oil on it. Instead, I'm just doing my beeswax polish, which has a little bit of linseed oil in it to make it dry. But yeah, it doesn't darken the wood as much as the pure linseed oil and it makes it a little bit smoother as well so I actually think it's more suitable for handles. I am probably going to go through and wax all my old saw handles as well just to give them that silky smooth surface finish. So I'm getting close to assembling the saw now and I intend to attach the blade to the back by friction, so by squeezing the sides of the back and make it tight enough to grip the blade that way, which means I have to put a small chamfer on the inside here so that it is possible to insert the blade after it's been uh, squeezed closed. Of course, I'm not going to squeeze it entirely closed, but Blackburn tools that supplies the blade and spine suggest making the opening a little bit thinner than the blade if you're going to rely on friction alone. So that's what I will be aiming for. So now it's actually at the point where the blade does not slide in. As accurately as I can measure, this one is 0 0.38 millimeters and this one is 0 0.3. This one being quite snug in the slot suggests the slot is 0 0.08 millimeters thinner than the blade. Hopefully that is not too thin. Let's see if it goes on. I think that's it. It is very, very solid. And with the teeth set, the saw is done. Let's try it out in some oak.
by cutting from both sides. You can easily see if the saw is veering to one side or the other because the cuts will be sort of coming to a point rather than staying parallel. If the cut is veering to the left, you just have to stone the left side of the teeth a little bit to remove the set. If the saw is veering to the right, stone the right side. This seems to be really straight. I think my dovetailing is going to go a little bit faster now. Thanks for watching.